Welcome to AP Design Digital Tools. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a, a site model, a virtual site model, uh, given just data sets. So to do this, um, well, let's take a look at what we're going to do. So I've taken a, a bit of uh, Manhattan Island, and what I've been able to create in the last five to ten minutes is this uh, rough outline of part of the island um, series of, uh, of the building masses uh, the street set uh, we can see trees and whatnot and that's all being driven by uh, grasshopper uh, downloading a file from the internet and then parceling that out into uh, various uh, parts so building streets trees Amandis, so on and so forth. So we're going to learn to do that. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do is one, go to um, the Grasshopper tutorials. You can find those in our college website uh, under the architecture department. You can see resources, tutorials, and then Grasshopper. I would expect you to have already watched these first three introduction mathematic operations and organization it's about 30 minutes of watching not a big deal it just get you uh, the kind of get you started with grasshopper um, the next thing you're going to need to do is go to food for rhino uh, you'll need to create a login it's free uh, it doesn't bother you unless you want it to uh, and it gives you a huge resource of plugins for grasshopper um, the one I'm wanting you to download is Elk. Uh, this was created uh, to allow you to open up OpenStreetMap.org. Uh, it's a great website if you haven't been to it. Uh, that shows you uh, clear maps of every city, and it allows you to, to basically uh, get that data set and and then parcel it out to all the things I just showed you. Um, one thing you'll need to do uh, when you come to this website on Elk, you just have to hit this More button. And then below that, you'll see a whole list of install instructions. Uh, every plugin is a little bit different, and every uh, they want you to put it in a slightly different place. So you'll just download this one. Uh, once you log in, you'll see a download button here and then unzip it and follow all these instructions exactly as they say or it won't work okay and once you install uh, restart rhino and you should show up something like this so in uh, grasshopper world i have a heck of a lot of plugins all from download from food for rhino uh, under the ease under extra um, you'll be able to find the elk uh, I did use grab the uh, the old elk, uh, but you really just need to use this elk too. So don't worry about uh, downloading the original version. Elk two will give you everything you see here. Okay, so let's get started. We're just going to create a new document, start it fresh, and the first thing we're going to do is grab this uh, antler, this location, uh, the antler icon and you'll see that you need a file path alright so to get that file you're going to open up openstreetmap.org and what you do uh, do a search for New York City um, in my search I just concentrated on a couple of places uh, maybe uh, the Soho region might be a good place to to go and keep this uh, window small at least on where I was doing it the day I was doing it it wasn't allowing me to get this rectangle uh, very big to get that rectangle all you have to do is click on export and then you'll see this manually select a different area and then just pull on the uh, vertices of that rectangle and get the uh, site that you want uh, the one site that we were looking at a moment ago was something along those lines. Uh, to start with, why don't you start with a data set small. So something like this. 
uh, go ahead then hit click export then save the file to uh, somewhere that you uh, know where it is and if you then feel a little bit more ambitious once you get that understood you might try a larger one so I have one here that's called New York City Soho it's not exactly where I'm located right here it's really close but not quite um, but you'll you know you find wherever you're wanting to go to and I guess it more like right over here and then I did another set that was about like right in you know this this zone which is what I just showed you all right so export those and put them where you know where to find them and then create a file path so here we have a file path and I'm going to right click on it and set one file path and uh, I'm going to my downloads and it looks like I have both the uh, Soho district and I have the lower Manhattan um, just to keep this simple I'm going to go with the uh, New York Soho for now and once I get that straightened out then I might use this kind of larger set so just link that into the file and then grab the uh, OSM data so that one's pretty easy the OSM goes into the O and the file goes into the F and then uh, you'll see and I'll get this over get organized a little bit you'll see that you'll have a bunch of points now just to give you an idea of what's going on here I'm gonna grab a panel and we'll see that this is there's a lot of, um, of data here uh, it's right now grabbing just the building information and so the K is the actual kind of uh, you know word database and the W is actually the geometry database. So if we want to see what that geometry looks like, uh, you just have to plug in exactly what it's looking for. So I'm going to go with the polyline. And I'm going to turn this one to preview, uh, disable that. And we'll see that those are uh, the building footprints. Um, you can also then, because it's on building, you can uh, Tell it to create the 3D buildings. So, and then I'm going to put a B rep on that. So now we can start to see that it has all that data. Uh, I, just a fair warning um, some cities uh, don't have a very good data set, so it doesn't have maybe the three dimensional um, uh, extrusions. So it all depends. Uh, our, for Atlanta, uh, we had like three buildings of the entire downtown that actually had that data. So we had to extrapolate that uh, ourselves. Kind of painful. But I'm showing you this so you don't have to go through that pain uh, if the data is available. Okay, so uh, we have that started. Uh, this may be a good time to, um, to get organized so I just typed in scribble and it gave me this um, naming uh, way of titling things so I'm just going to say buildings and I'm going to use my organization uh, colors to help me organize it so if you haven't created um, this up here you might do that kind of create a, uh, a template for yourself you can save um, under preferences you can save uh, your template file you see I've got mine right there so as soon as I created this I saved it there and now every time I open up a new file I've got this stuff ready alright so there's my buildings so let's just copy uh, well, no, let's just pull in a new one. So I have to go back to my uh, elk.
and I'll grab a new one of these go ahead and plug it in and then I'm going to tell it to be something else um, now you do have to do a little bit of hunting to figure out which one means what. Highway happens to be all roads. And I'll show you what to do with that information here in a second. So if we put the uh, polyline into that, we'll see that uh, on their screen we have a series of roads. Now you might wonder like which one's a highway, which one's a residential road, which one's a secondary road. Well to do that you have to go in and right click and select feature uh, subtypes for each of these um, highway buildings uh, the various um, features there happens to be uh, subtypes so in here you, you can start to look at like what are the all of the possibilities now this is all the possibilities of different things that it might have doesn't mean that the data sets going to have it so sometimes it's a little bit of hunting and pecking but I'll show you a kind of way that you can uh, get around that so I'm gonna click on secondary Let's see it also primary residential no not Area, residential, secondary, maybe tertiary, and let's see, let's go pedestrian, see if there is anything there. Alright, oh, I forgot to do one thing. And then you can show individual outputs. And so what this has done is it's, it's parceled that information into the various um, uh, different types, uh, subtypes. So let's see if there's any um, pedestrian. It looks like there isn't. So that one may not be useful. Primary, there's primary. Uh, residential, yes. Secondary, yes and tertiary doesn't look like any tertiary now it looks like it found something for pedestrian uh, the way that you can see you know you have all these uh, kind of visual noise and you'll see me uh, oftentimes uh, disable preview I probably won't tell you each time I do that I just got to watch uh, it, it's just a way of, of keeping uh, the noise on in Rhino very clean so I'm going to put in uh, streets And I'll go ahead and then group that. So that's the gist of it. Um, I will uh, do one more, but essentially, I mean, you've pretty much, you know, already got it. I mean, it's pretty simple. Uh, you just have the few steps, and then you're kind of all the way right into um, having a, a, a site model, at least a virtual one. But let's just do. Um, boundaries that may not show up here now let's see we'll do um, and go to types and let's see if we have anything doesn't look like it let's go to now it, once you set this up for one thing um, sometimes it might be specific to uh, a certain city as far as what you use for your subtypes but essentially you can use this all over again um, you just have to change the file path so if we go in and now I decide I want it instead of the uh, New York City Soho, I just want Lower Manhattan. Uh, I just go in there and I, you know, wait. I'll put this on pause. So about 30 uh, seconds later, uh, we see um, Lower Manhattan. I will go ahead and flip back to the uh, one I showed you originally. And we can just talk through, I won't really show you, 
uh, what I've done here as much as just you know okay so trees let's just go see what that was that's natural and uh, another way you can start to decipher what it's all uh, got in it is you can put in uh, a panel into the K and you can find out what we have. So natural we have uh, coastlines. And so it's anything that's going to be this first type. So anytime you see natural, because that's what we selected in the type, uh, you can see it's sub uh, type. Uh, right behind it. So we have coastline is a subtype, tree is a subtype, and um, you've got to just scroll through and you can see all the other ones. Uh, let's see, I tried amenities, I've not had a great luck sometimes with some of these subtypes. So it's just a kind of, I've seen it to be a hit or miss. Um, see what else did I use uh, natural uh, I guess I already said that but that gave me um, I suppose we should go ahead and, and uh, go into the subtypes and for this one I just want coastline and what I've also done here uh, if you download from Food for uh, Rhino, you download, um, let me go find it, what's called Human. Uh, Human allows you to uh, create line weights in, from your previews in Grasshopper. So if you're wondering how I've got kind of line weights and, and perhaps even colors assigned, uh, the line weights are coming from human. Uh, the colors, that's pretty easy. Just grab a swatch and that lets you uh, pick a color and then grab a what's called a preview. And you just plug it in with the color you want. And uh, so my trees right now are this kind of light green. Oh, and I probably I need to change this subtype because that was also the coast. So I should go in here and grab tree. And show individual. See, I don't quite understand. They did have trees, um, but essentially, uh, that's why I said about some subtypes, they just don't seem to hold up. So, um... You ought to just kind of play around with it. And um, I think that's about it. All right. Thanks, guys.